on air, online and on your smartphone right over the Christmas period. So when you are FM 103.7, I mentioned a little while ago, three of our regular guests are saying hooray for 2021 anyway uh, today. And the first of them is our Professor of Politics from the University of Newcastle, Dr. Jim Jones. Firstly, good morning, Merry Christmas and all of that, Good morning, Jim. Mark. Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas to all the listeners out there. Look, a great chance to do just a, a bit of a, a reflection on what 2021 has looked like in uh, in the political sphere. Um, again, this I really see 2021 as part two of 2020. So you think they'd be used to playing this type of politics by now? Well, certainly it's an extension of 2020. So 2021 has been a mixed year, a year of some successes for our political leaders, both at the state and at the federal level. Um, but it's also been some uh, lots of downs as well. And unfortunately for the Commonwealth level, the, the federal government, there have been a number of ho- own goals, things that perhaps could have been avoided, but unfortunately uh, were either mistimed or, um, from the Prime Minister's perspective, not handled as well as they should have been. Like, for example, when the French Prime Minister uh, did something unprofessional in a way by basically only saying that the Australian Prime Minister um, had lied, instead of using a diplomatic process, that's to say a, a response from the Prime Minister which was not to inflame it, he took it one step further, which in effect proved what the French Prime Minister was saying. It basically underscored that the Australian Prime Minister wasn't to be trusted, etc. So instead of sort of saying something, you know, non-committal like, well, I I hear what the French Prime Minister is saying, but uh, my understanding is slightly different to his, and we need to sort that out later. What about in the terms of, uh, let's call it pandemic politics, where um, there's been a lot of decisions where some are happy with, some are not happy, and you're never going to get the balance 100% right, I feel, there. But what about in terms of those that are in opposition governments, have been over the last 12 months? Um, Do you feel that we've seen a lot more people coming on board, being a part of the team, or still waiting in the wings for the government at that whichever level to make a mistake or trip up a little bit and go, ha-ha, we got gotcha. you. Well, Mark, it's, it's difficult to say. I, I think on, on the whole that the federal opposition has played it a pretty straight process. Yes, in the parliament they've taken opportunities to embarrass the government, highlight its faults, try and... Um, box it into a corner and score some points. But overall, in terms of what goes on in the public arena, the uh, Labor leader has been reasonably consistent in not wanting to undermine the specific pandemic approaches, Um, which is not to say, as I said, that there weren't point scoring going on. But in the main, the partisan politics was kept fairly low-key. That... Began, began to unravel through 2021, the latter half of 2021. But in the main, I think the opposition was taking as responsible a stand as you, you could in the circumstances. The other thing, Mark, that um, emerged, and I'm not necessarily persuaded of this, but the, you know, the states are now seen as you know, extra powerful and the Commonwealth has now been pushed into the background, etc., now, I think on the surface that is a fair, fair summation. We've seen the states take the lead and the states um, implement the delivery of services. That's I would, I would su- Yeah, I would suggest that, but I think that the, that's a narrative that the federal government uh, wrongfully mostly is, has put upon themselves. If they find themselves on the losing end of that, they have said, OK, well, we're just over here and the states are going to do their own thing. Then you have every state doing something a little bit differently, which causes confusion. So if, if the federal government are losers in there, that's that's of their own doing. Well, perhaps. So there are mm. two, two dimensions that I would sort of point to. Mm. One is that hospitals, schools, all of those sorts of things are the state's responsibilities. Yes, they get support from the Commonwealth, in various forms of block grants and funding, uh, etc. But in the main, it's the states who have to make the decisions about how those work, how those services are delivered. So, yes, of course, the states are going to be, you know, front and centre, right in the limelight. The second dimension to that is that the Commonwealth could have taken a a stronger lead at the level of the, the National Cabinet. But even there, it's managed to somehow undermine the 
um, shall we say, the legitimacy of that national cabinet approach and as a substitute for the Commonwealth, um, for the councils of Australian governments. And in its place, it sort of put this ad hoc arrangement, which it has shrouded in secrecy and only added to its own sort of woes, if you like. They kick, kicked another own goal by the way in which they've handled that. And it's been a bit of a hallmark of the Commonwealth government over the past couple of years that, you know, transparency has not been its strong suit and um, hiding things from sight has been one of its um, yeah, faults, well, I think. Yeah, we're keeping all that stuff in secret. People don't like that. I think if you come out and be as transparent as a piece of glad wrap, uh, I think that's probably the way to go, but good luck getting that over the line. Uh, in the last 30 seconds we have left, Jim, because we know there has to be a federal election next year. Super quickly, what month you're betting on and, and who would you like to be? Because I think it's a toss-up. I think the Prime Minister will wait as long as he can. And, um, for the probably, announcement? If, uh, yeah. yeah, I think he waits till he brings down the budget in March and then announce the election to be held in early May. Um, exactly, this is assuming that things don't change over the Christmas period, the so-called silly season mark, um, where the leadership may come under, under threat because some politicians in their mind have nothing better to do than to play numbers games to figure out, you know, can we win the election with this leader? Mm. Is it time to change leaders, etc.? There will be no shortage of um, speculation within the party rooms as they try and figure out the best way to position themselves come the election. All right, last question then. Do we have the same leaders, in your opinion, with all with all you've just said? Are the, are, do we have Albo and Scamo going for the uh, the election, or is there a chance for a change? Okay, Mark. I mean, <laughs> the, the predictions are really, really fraught on this. But That's true. I, I would say yes, mm. um, because there's not much to be gained for either major party in changing leaders at this stage. Partly for the Liberal Party, Morrison brought in um, the, the the party into government. Um, when he wasn't expected to. So he's got that going for him. He will probably keep that um, relatively secure and Albanese is likely um, to, to stay on as leader because the Labor Party don't have anyone in, immediately in the wings mm. to follow. And, in fact, nor does the Liberal Party have anyone in the wings that could step into what Scott Morrison's doing in a way that will... Ghana national type support. All right, well, we will see what happens in 2022. In the meanwhile, Jim, have a great Christmas and hope uh, that is all nice and relaxing for you and your people as well. Thanks very much, Mark, and you have a great Christmas too, and all the listeners have a safe and happy Christmas. All right, 2NURFM 103.7.